Welcome to the Crimson Circle Connection Center, the studio here in Louisville, Colorado. Welcome to this incredible holiday season, a season where you can truly, all of us, celebrate life. I think at this point, we are truly ready for the message from Adamus Saint-Germain, as channeled by Jeffrey Hoppe. So, welcoming everyone. We have an incredible crowd. So many of you dressed up for the holidays. Congratulations to our crowd. We had quite a competition earlier. But with that, it's time for the shout. So, that also means it's really time, that time to take the good deep breath, to breathe in consciously with feeling, breathe into the whole body and choose life. Take the good deep breath and feel. This is that good deep breath that no one can take for you. Only you can take the good deep breath. So again, breathe deeply with allowing and feeling and feel as the energies flow. This is the breath that invites consciousness and awareness. Take the good deep breath and allow all our senses to open and expand the human and the divine. Musical play to guide us into this Adama's channel. I invite you to stay with a good deep breath, with a good deep breath, and open as the music plays. Here, the I am here. Breathe. Breathe. I am that I am, Adamus of Sovereign Domain. Thank you. What a joy to be here with you at the end of your year. As a matter of fact, 
Tonight, at the Ascended Masters Club, we're having a huge celebration and dinner, kind of like what you're doing here at the Masters Club. Ours is the Ascended Masters Club, but we're having a huge celebration. We're celebrating that you made it through the year. Uh, truly, that's a huge accomplishment considering how challenging things are right now. And that's a lot about what I'm going to talk about today. But the fact that you made it through the year with all the struggles, your damned doubts. Don't you wish you had an anti doubt pill? Well, you do, but uh, don't take it. Something that you'd take that was natural, safe, and effective. Just take that pill and release all of your doubts, because really that's the biggest thing holding you back. That's self-doubt. If you didn't have that, if you didn't worry about what other people think – and I know you all say, well, I don't really care what others think, but actually as compassionate beings you really do – way too much than what you should. If you weren't worried about losing everything, getting rid of the doubts, but then maybe losing everything. but you already have. Uh, if you didn't <laughs> – and we can laugh about it – <laughs> if you weren't so worried about going out of your mind, I mean, really losing it. You've seen people that are institutionalized, drooling all over themselves, uh, being weighted on hand and foot. Oh, that doesn't sound too bad, does it? <laughs> Without their mental uh, faculties. If you weren't worried about that, and you weren't worried about just going out of existence. You I mean, like it all stops. And if you weren't worried about being so damn bored with the human perception of what you think happens in enlightenment, uh, everything works out. What do I do all day? Uh, hint and it, create a little drama just to keep yourself in the human thing. But if you didn't have all these doubts, imagine how easy it would be. How much fun you would have, where you wouldn't have that grind every day, that, that kind of mental, emotional grind that grinds you down. You think about everything. Imagine if you had that anti-doubt pill and you just took it and you didn't doubt what you were going to do. You just did it. You didn't care about the outcome. You didn't care about if it was successful or not because you learned that's a very, very human judgment of things. If you didn't doubt and everything was simply an experience, enjoy, and that's it. You didn't care what other people thought, what you won or what you lost, knowing that you would never go out of existence. Imagine how liberating, how freeing that would be for all of you. So I look at it at the end of the year and I say, you made it. It was a pretty good year. There were some challenges along the way – well, a lot of challenges along the way. You're going through a very, very interesting kind of uh, – the past couple of months – very, very interesting. I'll explain a little bit about it as we get into today's shout, but you made it through the year. You're here. So we're having a celebration tonight at the Ascended Masters Club, kind of um, similar to yours except we have better food and better wine <laughs> and generally better company. Uh -oh. oh! Let me explain why. Guess. Who's the guest of honor tonight? Jesus. Jesus. Absolutely. Oh, whoa! Absolutely. See? Absolutely. Now, Jesus, Yeshua, please. Yeshua is not a soul being, it's a collective energy, your collective energy, and, and that of a lot of other people on the planet. But Yeshua is not a soul being like you are. It's kind of a composite that you all added a little bit to and came out with this thing called Jesus. So Jesus is going to show up tonight, kind of the guest of honor at the party, and we're going to, we're going to tell Jesus jokes, uh, yeah. <laughs> and we're going to tell Jesus stories. We're going to laugh a lot about the entire misconception of who Yeshua really was, uh, and who Mary was, and who Mary Magdalene was. There's so many misconceptions about it that people still hold on to so tightly because they like holding on to suffering. Mm -hmm. They like holding on to all those old stories of being um, put up on a cross and persecuted and whipped and everything else. It's kind of a human consciousness that's still so pervasive on the planet 
right along with, with doubt, but it's time to let go of all that. It's time to free Jesus. Uh, as Tobias said years ago, take Jesus off the cross. Could you imagine? Thank you. With the golf applause there. Take Jesus off the cross. If you could imagine, if all the churches around the world that display Yeshua up on the cross would let him free, would take him down, instead of the suffering Jesus, have, well, show your shirt, if you would, please. Show you the parting Jesus. <laughs> The dancing Jesus, the yoga Jesus, the <laughs> the, yeah, the cool Jesus, yes. So if we could only just, coming back to the point, if we could only just take a pill and let that doubt go, because I watch you, and I see what you're going through, and I see all that mind work. Ugh, it's like, it's like you've got these gears in your head, and they're really rusty and old, but you're still trying to use them. I'm going to talk a lot more about it in Pronost coming up next month, but the mind is at the end, and not just for you, but for humanity. And I mean that literally. This is the last era of the mind, and I'll explain in great detail uh, ad nauseum, boredom, and everything else. I heard, I heard, <laughs> and everything else about we love you. why you this is the last era of boring as the lecture is going to be, not of the mind. Why did you look at me? Because I heard the comments earlier about the original pronoun was kind of boring, you said. Well, the original one was. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry. With that, truth is the truth. As we get started for the day, question. We're going to have quite a few questions today. So, question for the day, Linda on the oh, microphone. My pleasure. I love oh. asking questions because then your wisdom comes up. When we first started doing this, when I first came in after Tobias, it was kind of challenging doing the questions. <gasps> oh, they're boring. <laughs> they, they were – I'm going to just – I'm going to come right out and say it. Uh, they were lightweight answers. They were surface answers. They were uh, expected kind of answers. There wasn't a lot of depth. Now we get into things, and the, the answers – your answers have so much more depth and energy. They're, they're insight and wisdom. So whereas I used to dread doing the questions and answers, now I actually love doing it because you're sharing with everyone, with the ones who are here, the ones who are online, and more than anything else, the ones who are coming after you. We're, we're creating a recorded history of going from enlightenment into embodied mastery, all of us, all of you are creating that history. These are archives, not just with the footage and, the, and the, the words and everything else that comes out of it, but an energy pathway for those who come next, who read this 10 years from now, 20 years, 100, 1,000, who read this or watch it and learn to laugh at one of the times that's the most difficult to laugh when you're going through all this. They read it and they can feel the wisdom, but more than anything else, what they're going to be getting energetically is the transition that you've gone through in these seven or so years we've been together, the wisdom that sprung forth, whereas some of the answers to the questions back a while ago were kind of banal – not anal, banal – now they're filled with essence and wisdom. So with that, let's turn up the house lights, and boy, your answers better be good today. <laughs> we are recording this. The question is, first question of, of a number that I'm going to ask today, first question is, what's in the news right now? Now I'm not talking about specific headlines. Overview. What's happening on the planet? What's – you know, aside from Donald Trump and uh, specific nuclear wars, you know, trivial things like that. What's the essence? What's really happening in the news? And I'd like some real wisdom on this. Don't recite a headline. Tell me what's happening on the planet right now. Linda, please. First victim. I mean, first, uh, first wisdom. <laughs> oh, could we read the energy in that? Now, I'm not a psychic. I am an Ascended Master, however, and what I read there – and I hope you got it on the camera – what I read there was, so for 15 years I never got the camera, and now I get it twice in a row. That's my practice. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have to stand here? Please. 
No, you actually don't, but we would prefer it. Yes, you can do anything you want. Yes. What, what's in the news? What's kind of happening on the planet right now? If, if you were talking to a group of um, high school students uh, and they're clueless and you're trying to say, but here's, here's what's happening on the planet, what would you say? So, so much. It's boggling my body, listening to the whole world. Yes. Um, we got Jerusalem. Which Tobias is ecstatic about? Actually, not. But let that keep going. I felt that there was some excitement there. Yes. I've talked to people. If you're Jewish living in Israel, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But uh, I've also talked. Do you to realize people. what's what's really going to happen with all that? Yeah, yeah. But I've talked to people around that um, don't know what the problem is, that they feel... So what's happening, uh, what's happening, which your opinion, you look out at the world, you say, oh my gosh, here's the direction we're going in. Here's what's happening. Everything. Everything. Be specific with one thing. Wounds healed sexually. Yeah, there you um, go. Total confusion from a male. Total. They, yeah. they don't even know... Men, do you agree with that in the audience? Yes, overall. no, yeah, yeah. overall. Okay. Um, it's just really mind-boggling. Yeah. Total okay. confusion. Total confusion. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it a loss of identity uh, in individuals and in groups. Yeah. Loss of, and what happens when somebody starts to lose their identity? Oh. They try to go back and reclaim what they had. It's safer than going to something new. So right. there is a lot of that happening with the masculine, feminine energy, tremendous amount. And men are literally, literally getting kicked in the <coughs> it's true. butt. It's true. Butt, uh, in, in the butt right now. But they're now. also very confused about all Oh, absolutely. It. That's what's kicking them in the butt. They're, they're not used to that confusion. Yeah. They're used to their way of doing things. Right. And it's not working anymore. They feel, no. what do you say, emasculated? Yeah. Men? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Not chambra man, jeez, I'm talking about other men. So emasculated, what, what's my role? What, what, what am I supposed to do? They're confused. They're totally. very confused. And then what happens? Oh, they're starting attacking the women now. They have um, been for a long time. But no, this is in a different way. It's like yes. they're so afraid of what to do. Yeah. I'm going to give you a little hint on that one. Women are very psychic. Mm -hmm. And they know how to use psychic energies, mm -hmm. often tied in with sexual energy, but they know how to use psychic energy. Men really don't. I mean, non chamber men really don't. <laughs> they don't know how to do psychic exploration. They don't know how to psychically feel into what's going on. They've shut down some of their emotional conduits, so now they're totally lost if they would just regain that inner psychic, which, which actually picks up on what we're going to talk about later, but it picks up on things. But they, they, they cut off their antenna, so to speak, uh, <laughs> their psychic, and psychic antenna a while back. It's They're very lost. Thing. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your wisdom. A couple more. What's going on in the news? Hello, gorgeous. How, how are you? I'm doing Merry quite Christmas. well, as always, <laughs> yes. Um, my feeling was, before you started this discussion, was just what you said about those groups that are going back, hanging on yes. for dear life to the past. Yes. And groups that want to go forward into the future. And yes. there's this push-pull thing going on yes. that is so obvious in not just our society, but in the whole world, actually, if you keep track of what's going can, on. Can evolution be reversed or slowed down? Can, there, there's this whole evolution going on, not just a biological evolution, but an evolution in the complete network, meaning life, going on. Can it be slowed down? In other words, these people that are going back to the roots, the ones that say uh, computers are awful, the ones who don't like technology, the ones who think uh, we're being shameless uh, in, in, the, in the eyes of God, can, can we go back or slow down evolution? You know, I don't 
feel that. I don't feel that there's a slowing down in general. I know individually, where is your consciousness? Mm -hmm. That's where you're living. Right. So well, what you're about the, the planet? Past. What about the planet? I don't feel that. Okay. That it could be slowed down. It's just an evolving beingness among people. And what What happens to the groups and the individuals within the groups? that truly are trying to stay in their roots. And, and I'm not talking about just you know, getting rid of all your material goods and going off and living at Walden Pond, but, but actually trying to go back to the, the, uh, the uh, uh, country roots, cultural roots, family roots, and all the rest of that. What happens to them as evolution continues forth at the fastest speed ever? What happens to these people? Well, I would hope they would some of them would become more open, yeah. and some may crack up, <laughs> I don't know, yeah. because it is what it is, mm -hmm. and it's, I don't know if you're describing a general consciousness, a collective consciousness, or an individual consciousness. I think that's the difference, but individually, there are choices yes. in this life, and we get to choose which way we're Most moving. Most people have no clue what a choice is. Uh, uh, really, really. Uh, now, I'm going to say something today and expand on it uh, in some of the shouts to come uh, about choice that may seem to be a contradiction, but most people huh. really do not understand what choice is. Their choice is about as limited as the color of socks in their sock drawer. <laughs> and that's it, really, or what they're going to have for dinner. They do not understand life choices, soul choices, choices to go beyond, uh, nor do they want to understand it. So I'm going to say that go, – go ahead. Yes, I mean, I'm wondering if your view in some cases is that they are hypnotized in a way, with a, right, in a yeah. place that they, they could just linger for who knows how long. I mean, that's – Another way to go is just yes. stay with that and not seek. But it's back to what Chase said before. Uh, there's a lot of lost people on the planet. Oh, yeah. Now, they're not interviewing them on the news, you know, why are you lost, but you just feel into there's kind of a global lost feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll, I'll give you another little clue I may talk about in Pronos, but we talked about the New Earth before and saying the new earth and the old earth are not coming together. There's too much of a chasm between the ones who are conscious, the ones who know what a choice is, the ones who are allowing the, uh, the integration of the master and the human. So many that understand that, that it's created a new earth. It's, uh, it's not what you'd think of as nirvana, but it is the place to go to be the creative expression of your soul. Mm. With a lot of human attributes, but without ever getting stuck in the human attributes. Then you have a whole group on the planet here who is still into their, into their um, processes, into their evolution of the self, uh, but it's not congruent with the ones who are really allowing their true consciousness. So you have a lot who are still going through their human lifetime after lifetime experience. Then you have a group which I haven't talked about yet, that is holding on so much to the old, to the past, primarily to the old masculine energy, and it includes a lot of women. A lot of women who do not want the responsibility to be side by side with Adam. A lot of them that actually like wearing the prairie dress and making dinner all the time and that, that kind of stuff. It's actually right now creating what I'm going to call the, uh, the under-earth, uh, which certainly is not the new earth, it is, and it's really not this classic earth, this physical earth. It's creating a whole new reality slash dimension where those who are really holding on to the past and will not let go and don't want to let go and want to continue to believe in a god who is judgmental and angry that demands worship and, and all the rest of that, they will go there. And it will not be on this physical planet, but it will appear to be. It will have more gravity than this physical planet, uh, psychic and literal gravity. It will have more rules and regulations, more righteousness, uh, and a lot stricter. 
It would be like uh, going from a liberal arts college to a highly religious uh, college, you know, where you had to go to church every day, and they want to. No, nobody's making them going to go there after they come into their next lifetime. They want that, what they call simplicity. They want that uh, subservience to God. They want, they want to believe in a higher power and a masculine higher power. They don't want to understand that you are God also, and that's fine. We don't go try to change their minds, nor would they listen to us. They would call us Satan. We don't try to uh, do anything other than absolutely honor them for the new stage at the new theater of the underworld where they're going to go play. That's it. That's it. So a lot is happening on the planet right now. Well, thank you. I, I end up talking more than – no wonder there's so much wisdom in this. <laughs> Next, please. Next, Next. please. What's in the news? What's the overview in the news? Uh, I just see, especially, well, time just talked about it, the silence breakers, people that are energetically yeah. just said, enough. Yes. I'm ready to tell my story. It's coming out. And it's just coming out. Yeah. And it's been buried for so long for yeah. a lot of these people. I mean, mm -hmm. like 20 years or more, maybe oh, for yeah. some of these Lifetimes. people. You know, lifetimes. Lifetimes. Yeah. Lifetimes. So, and, um, and so, yeah, they're just saying. So this is all breaking loose right now, and, mm -hmm. and it's, it's very interesting to watch from uh, Angel's Peak, you know, get, stand back, get, get out of the way. It's very interesting to watch the, the, the silence breakers. I, I love that term. Uh, these people are coming forward at, at, the, at the, the kind of almost the sake of embarrassment and uh, people making fun and judgments and everything else, but it's shaking everything up right now. Uh, and and shake-up – the first part of shake-up is always kind of fun. It's like we're really shaking things up, but then everything else starts coming out with it. Then it, then it gets ugly, like your sweaters. I think that's why the men get scared. and They're like, well, what else is going to happen? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So uh, wh what do you feel about the whole role of the, the male on the planet? What's happening with that? Well, they're going through a process where they just have to evolve. I mean, it's either – Either can stay stuck and not figure it out, or they just have to be like, "Well, I've got to wake up and." Or create it out. something like this underworld that, yeah, uh, or, do that. Yeah. or other world you may want to call it, uh, because it's like, no, we're gonna we're gonna continue to support the man. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're gonna stick to their guns, or they're gonna just say, hmm, "Maybe I should lighten yeah. up a little bit." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, so what advice would you give to? The typical man on the planet right now, typical meaning, you know, they they're certainly don't participate in our gatherings, uh, but just the typical man on the street. What advice would you give them? Just start paying attention, being aware of how, I mean, it goes really back to how you're feeling and, yeah. and seeing, what, seeing what is evolving out there in the world. Not so much maybe just headlines, but the feeling of everything. Yes. Of, why these women feel this way, and right. and who they see that are men that are changing, um, whether it be in business or personal life and things like that, mm -hmm. and see which way they kind of want to go because mm -hmm. they're gonna, like you say, end up one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I so, feel there's a little bit of talk out of both sides of the mouth. A lot of men will say well, it's time for women to have more of a place in business or or religions. Uh, what well, is about time for there to be female priests in the Catholic Church, otherwise it's going gonna, it's gonna to put them under. Uh, they say that out of one side of the mouth, but on the other side of the mouth, in their own personal situations, in their own jobs or business world or whatever, they're having such a difficult time with it. A woman, you know, making the same amount of money or being my boss? It's changing slowly, but they're lost. They're really lost. Good. Thank you. Cool. Yes, one more over here. Okay. What's in the news right now? What's really happening? With all of that, I'm seeing profound acts of love and kindness. Yeah. Oh, tremendous. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, uh, a lot of acts of love and kindness in the midst of being totally messed up and lost yeah. uh, for the planet. Uh, pe pe sometimes people's best comes forth in the time of crisis. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. unfortunately, they, 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 are, they are so used to crisis 
that they are at their best, and sometimes they actually elicit crisis In just order so to be they loving, can yes. they can be heroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but good observation. The time of the planet right now, unprecedented change. However, I do have to note that there is also, at least in this era of humanity, uh, post Atlantis, there is probably more prosperity, an abundance, less wars going on. There are more acts of kindness, more people contributing money. There are more people who are now getting access to clean water and somewhat healthy food around the planet. So in a way, it actually is one of the best of times. Uh, there's not a lot of big wars right now. There are tribal wars and uh, old wars, but not a lot of big wars. But it's also a time of everything changing so quickly, and people are lost. People are very, very lost. And, and I'm generalizing for the sake of time here, but when people get lost, it is an emotional slash mental thing. They're, they're really not lost, but their old ways of doing things and responding to people and situations is having to change very quickly. They don't know what to do, particularly men that don't know what to do, because they, don't, they haven't allowed that psychic, uh, what I would call most feminine aspect within their lives. That psychic aspect that the, the females have, all of you have within you as the feminine energy, can actually project out and start picking up things, feeling into things, uh, looking into other potentials and uh, probabilities. Men don't do that so much. That's why women can multitask, dear Linda, whereas the men are pretty singular, Caldra. So, because the women send out a lot of psychic energy. Now, the men look at it and say, that is so confusing because you're having a conversation about something, and the next minute you've changed that conversation, how are men supposed to know that you just switch subjects without telling them? <laughs> and the women are like, well, you've got to be more psychic uh, to pick up on that. But the world is coming to this thing right now where it's very lost, and what people tend to do right now, more than anything in this lostness, more so in men than in women, because women are used to their psychic and emotional self, and they talk a lot amongst themselves, <coughs> men don't know what to do. So what do they do? These medications, these SSRIs, the anti-anxiety, depression, everything else, because they don't know what to do. They're so lost. And the funny thing about these medications is it makes one more lost. That's what they're for, make you go out of touch with yourself. And that's why you have so many male white men doing these atrocious acts of uh, mass murders, mass uh, terrorism type of thing, because they are so lost. If you track it back, if you were able to find the, uh, all the police and hospital records on all these mass murders, uh, and I'm talking particularly about in the United States, you would find that they are on or have been recently on these medications because they're lost. The world is going through such a change so quickly now that it's difficult for so many. The world is going through changes on, uh, on an emotional level, just like you have experienced in the past. The world is – the patterns of evolution are changing faster than ever. You've seen the – what do you call it? A hockey stick chart. Evolution for the past, uh, let's say, 5,000 years. Then we hit about 50 years ago, and it goes up like that. It's going up so fast that it's going to come around the other side on itself. I mean, just like, uh, like an airplane doing a, a loop in the sky. It's going so fast, and, and I mean that half literal. Uh, it's going so fast, everything is going to turn on itself. Now, I bring this up for one important reason, because I'd like you to remember why you're here right now. You chose this time. You chose to come in, most of you post-World War II, knowing that this was the time, what I call the time of machines, but the time of great changes on the planet. 
and great splits on the planet. Splits into the New Earth, splits into the Under Earth, or Lower Earth, whatever you want to call it. A time of things splitting apart rather than coming together, but actually it's creating uh, what you would call more specialized playgrounds rather than one great big mass playground. People are getting more specialized. I want to play on New Earth, uh, where I have a lot more creative freedom. Or others saying, I don't like playing any of these games, I'm going to go back to the basics, back to roots, and they're going to go to the Under Earth. And I don't mean like hell or underground. I mean, it's, it's a different type of Earth. And they're going to reincarnate there in their next lifetime, and they're going to think it's this planet, will have all the same attributes, but it will be older. I mean, it won't be modern and contemporary. It would almost be like reincarnating back in time, in a way, but they're going to reincarnate on this I, – I call it the underworld. So we have all this going on, and I want you to just feel into it a moment, because sometimes you forget, you get lost also, why you chose to be here right now. Why you chose to be on this planet, whether you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever age you happen to be, why you chose to be here at one of the craziest times ever, one of the most challenging times. And I'd like you to feel into that. Uh, no music needed here. Just really feel into it for a moment. You chose it. There is no mistake about this life. I know so many of you have wondered, well, how come I haven't done more in this lifetime? Or how come I haven't accomplished more? How come I haven't written uh, best selling books or started a big business? You didn't come here for that. I mean, you can also do that if you want, but most of you have chosen not to. You came here in this lifetime for one thing your last lifetime on Earth, on this Earth. And you came here to embody the Spirit, the Master. You came here to bring together the human and the Master in this lifetime. It's been a quiet journey, a lonely journey, and, and a difficult one because of the doubts, because once in a while you lose that inner compass, that that inner knowingness of why you chose to be here. You didn't come to try to save the planet. That does not work. But you know because of what you're doing within yourself, taking on things that aren't even yours, you know what you're doing by being here, being a presence, not, not, not a lecturer, not doing sermons, not preaching, but being a presence on this planet and staying in the body and actually totally changing the dynamics of the body, the DNA. The DNA is this amazing, hardly even understood, uh, kind of what you would call the light thread, spirit thread. Uh, we sometimes call it the angel thread. It's the life-giving force behind everything. It's the programming. It's the software of life. But even that's changing right now. You're changing in your body, and I do have to chuckle to myself uh, when I hear Shambhara is like, oh, my body, my, my, the aches and the pains and what I'm going through, and I'm like, breathe it in. Accept it, because you asked for it. Don't resist it. And I know that sounds the opposite of what you, sh you think you should do. Run from it. Uh, fill yourself up with supplements and holy oils and everything else. No. You're going through a phenomenal change. Can you let yourself experience it? So remember for a moment why you're here. Why at this particular time? I've told all of you, you could have, you could have allowed your enlightenment last lifetime, a couple lifetimes ago, You'd probably croaked right away and come to the other side. But you said, no, I'm going to come in in this time. And I'm going to go through this change in the body. Like I said to the group in Australia, it's like if you were a jet airplane traveling through the air 500 miles uh, an hour, 
and you decide you're going to totally redo yourself. Uh, and, and put on entirely new engines that don't consume um, a petroleum-based product. Now it's a new energy type of engine. You're going to totally redo the whole frame of the aircraft and everything else while you're flying, and that's what you're doing. You're doing, you're doing it on the fly, and, and it's truly amazing. Crazy as hell. Crazy. You could have let others do it first, but you didn't. <laughs> He said, no, I'm going to do it, but then every once in a while, every once in a while, every night I hear from most of you, it's like, oh, what's happening, Adamas? I'm like, you're getting enlightened. It's like, I thought it would be fun. And it's like, who told you that? <laughs> I never said that. Uh, Tobias never said that. He, he died in prison in his enlightenment. I mean, it's, enlightenment is not a pretty thing. I mean, it's really not. The end result is phenomenal, but the process of enlightenment, tch, you know, it's, it's terrible, miserable. So let's take a good deep breath with that. <laughs> yeah. Next question. What's going on with you right now? We talked about what's going on in the world. What have you been going through? I'm going to give this to the last two, three months. What, and, and be succinct. I don't want to hear a lot of your old stories. Be succinct about it. What's going on with you, Patrick? Well, hang on a second. No, 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 no. I take that back. I was okay, okay. Uh, no, 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 no. The women's room. What's well, been going right on with around. me for the past two or three months, and it'd be interesting if other Schomburg are feeling it, is in the simple sentence would be uh, human board, board, boredness and passionless. Oh, good, good. Oh, you're right where you're supposed to be then. Well, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, boredom and pa no passion. And you, you can't fake it. You can't fake uh, the passion. I mean, I have, I'm asking to allow, I'm, a, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm allowing my I am passion, but I can't force it. No, so you can't. So I feel that mom moments I have it. Yeah. But it's not anything consistent. Uh, it's the worst part of, uh, I think, the worst part of enlightenment. You lose your, your passion. There's nothing there. And it's absolutely appropriate because. Those passions are old, they were human-based. And, and then you try to resurrect it and bring passion back, and it's like, who are you kidding? You know? And, and, and you sink to this uh, kind of a depth, uh, this despair, and it's like, oh, why am I here on the planet? And it's like, and you're bored crapless, and, and then you try to occupy your time and everything else. And I got lots of time. Yeah, you got yeah, a lot of time. I got an abundance and, of time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and no, that's that's actually where you should be, because you're transitioning or evolving or whatever you want to call it. You're, well, I'm going to talk about it in a moment. So I don't think I'm the only one having this experience. Anybody yet. else <laughs> bored <laughs> and without passion? <laughs> I, I, anybody going to write a couple books about it? Yeah. Bored without passion. Yes. What's going on with you right now in your life? Um, I would say ditto. Ditto. Yes. Yeah. But perhaps farther along just a little bit. Yeah. Where I'm past the despair. Uh huh. Um, but I'm still, I have an abundance of time. Uh, abundance yeah. of time. <laughs> and I'm open. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, mental challenges right now? Um, you talk to yourself a lot? I do, yeah. Trying to um, live from the heart. Yeah. Not the How's that going? It's a challenge. Yeah, it is. It is. it is. But I'm new to this. Oh, you journey, are. Yeah. Oh no, you're not. <laughs> oh no, you're not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Speaking of ditto, uh, th that's what they should call any of you who return in another lifetime. Just ditto. <laughs> Same old thing, doing it again. But but you're not. This is this is it. Last lifetime. Okay. What else? Two more. What else is going on in your life? Many things. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, what's the big ones? Uh, the big ones? Well, I just got through a big patch of depression. Uh -huh. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And my body hurts here and there. Yeah. Um, and I also feel like things are coming together. I, ha I have this sense of union. Yeah. Oh, uh, isn't that weird? Uh, yeah, yeah. It, things falling apart in a sense of un union. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, things are beginning to come together for me. Yeah. Good. And feeling my heart and I'm going I'm I'm to give you all a little kind of a... a <laughs> Ascended Master fatherly advice, don't try to force any of this. Don't try to force happy. Uh, don't try to force anything right now. I'll explain it in just a moment, okay. but don't. You're going through something. You're just going through a transition. Mm -hmm. you, know? you know? You're driving along in your car, open road, beautiful day. Mm -hmm. 
suddenly you go in through a tunnel, you know, they built through a mountain. It's dark and you can't see and you don't know, you know, know where you are and it feels weird, claustrophobic. So you can get to the other side, you know, other side of the mountain. It's the same way. You're going through all this stuff and all, all of a sudden everything gets dark and falls apart. That was not a uh, home. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then you worry and you try to medicate or meditate it. Uh, you, you try to take something, whether it's alcohol or drugs or something else, or, or supplements or uh, holy uh, sweat lodge things. Forget about it. Uh, or you try, you try to medicate or meditate your way through it. Hmm. Don't. What to do? Allow. Allow. As odd as it seems, what you're going through right now is the greatest experience of any lifetime. You are going through Im- embodied enlightenment. And some days it really sucks. I mean, some days you just want to vomit on spirituality because it's so difficult. And other days it's like you feel, oh yeah, it's all coming together. This is absolutely appropriate. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong when your body hurts. I'm going to, um, I'd love to show you what is happening at your cellular level, your DNA and within. You are totally bringing in a very different what I I don't like the term light body because everybody thinks of this fuzzy you know glowing thing and it's not that you're bringing in a true energy body that's relatively independent where you no longer have to be feeding off of other people or food or anything else and en- a true energy body it's a non parasitic body. And every physical body, every human body is parasitic. You know, first of all, you have parasites in your gut right now. Yes. They're there. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me out of here. So, you, you, and, and your physical body is parasitic. It needs and feeds on energy, whether it's other people, whether it's food or anything else. You're, you're addicted. The true energy body that's coming in doesn't need that. It's, it's I don't want to say 100 percent, but it's mostly uh, independent. So you're going through this on the fly. You're remaking yourself. It would have been easier to have died and start all over. But you're stubborn. You insisted, no, we're going to stay. We're going to do it right here while we're living. So take a deep breath. You're right where you should be. Thank you. Yeah. And one more, very quick. Uh, what's happening with you right now? I feel like I'm on the the craziest roller coaster ride. Yeah. Okay. Right now, today, are you at the top or the bottom? Or I'm, screaming I, down? No, I no. feel good today. I'm with Shambra. Okay. You know, hey, yeah. I'm happy today. I'm yeah. like, you know, the the person that I prefer to be yes. is here today. The master's here. Yeah. Um, but a lot. It's like things are much more intense when I'm not, when it's just the human, okay? Yes. It's like these fears, financial insecurity feel, fears, yeah. okay? Because right. I haven't worked for a couple years and oh, it's no. just, yeah, I'm going to lose. I thought you're supposed to work. <laughs> Have a good job, well, work hard. Losing the, you know, what control I think I have. Yeah. See, I, I can, I'm. It, it's, it's pretty intense, Adamas. Yes. That it's when I get very into that, intense. I mean, it is it's so like. Intense. I mean, where the body even starts shaking, okay? And it's like, oh my gosh, this is no fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and then other no, days. No, it is in a way. In yeah, a weird and, way. The, and the other days, you know, when I'm the master, it's like, I love life. I trust everything's going to come to me. I, you know, on yeah. yo, here we are. <laughs> and, you know, so yeah, that's, that's it. It's yeah, the, I call those extreme. in phase days and out of phase days. Big time. There's days you're in phase with a master, the human and the master. And the master, I, I know this sounds kind of callous, but the master doesn't give a damn uh, because the master doesn't need energy. The master doesn't need to be living in a human form to to exist. The master doesn't need a job. The master's looking at it going, oh, when is the human just going to stop working so hard and just allow? A- and so the master is kind of indifferent. The master is not coming in to save your life, get you a job, a new house, a soulmate, or a partner, or anything else. The master is saying, hey, human, would you just allow? Because this is happening anyway. 
Yeah. The Masters laughs, laughs a lot. I, I don't know if you hear that little laughter in the background when your life is going to shit. It's not me. It is not me, I, I guarantee. I go off and laugh somewhere else. But the Master is going, well, you're making it so damn difficult. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. So what's going on with Shamba right now? I'll summarize it, just like I summarized the news. You're in transition. You're in a great transition right now, a great evolution of self. Remaking the body, starting at actually a, a sub-DNA level, at a – I want to say it's not even an atomic level uh, or a carbon-based level. It's all changing. Now, you still look in the mirror and say, well, I'm still seeing that face and it's getting a little older every day. It's going to, a little bit, because of the tremendous energy that the human body is consuming right now – also look at your appetite – tremendous energy that it's consuming and going through a change that actually doesn't really need any energy. But the human is so worried about it, and the human is teetering on the old biological evolution, uh, homo sapien evolution uh, cycle, and, and still trying to follow that. The, the master, uh, which we would call the energy body, is coming in, and that's causing all this – well, a feeling of being lost. What's coming next? And fear. Am I going to die? Uh, am I, am I going to go out of my mind? And then the doubts come in. You're really good at doubting. Uh, you, you've perfected the art of doubt uh, in so many ways. And then you pull that resource in. Oh, I don't know what to do. Oh, I, I do. I'm going to pull in doubt. I'm going to doubt everything I do. I'm going to self-analyze myself, and, and I'm going to isolate myself, and I'm going to go into complete boredom and lack of passion and everything else. It, and it's almost – it's in a way uh, effective, because it, it wears you out. I was going to say a bad word, but it wears you out. And in that wearing out, an interesting phenomena takes place. And everything you're going through right now, you cannot do it wrong. You can do it miserable. You can do it the hard way, but you cannot do it wrong. It's going to happen. It, it has happened. The whole ascension – I've said from the start, relax into your enlightenment. Uh, it, it just take it easy. The human is not responsible for and cannot do enlightenment. The human would have no concept. The human would humanize enlightenment. Then it would be limited. Uh, then it would be uh, – it, well, it would be really boring. Uh, the, the human cannot do enlightenment because you're still operating in your limited senses. But if the human just allows, relaxes into the enlightenment, looks at every experience, whether it's pain in the physical body, whether it's absolute sheer boredom, but steps back and looks at it and goes, wow. Look at what's happening, because at the same time, there is such a change in your uh, body – and I don't mean your physical body uh, – but in the, in the energy body that you are that will eventually change the physical. And no, you're not necessarily going to get 50 years younger or look 50 years younger. You're not going to want to live to be 500 years old, I guarantee that. Whether you are in the energy body or not, um, remember for a moment, if you would, just really remember that at the cellular level, what it was like back in the Lemurian times, where you were still very ethereal, very airy. You hadn't completely embedded into biology yet. You were just dancing along with with the biological life forms on the planet, but not not in the incarnation cycle yet. So it was kind of kind of um, light, kind of um, almost a little vapory. It's like you're there, but you're not there. You're, you're experiencing it, but you're not trapped in it. And just remember back for a moment. You all went through it. It's where you actually develop such a love for nature, and particularly the elementals. That's kind of in a little way of where you're going. In other words, not so heavy physical, not so connected to the body or to the mind. And it's a weird feeling. 
Because just like these groups of people on the earth right now that are going to be going to the underworld, this new place set up just for those who like it, strict and tough, you've got this part of you right now that is holding on so much to the old, because it's what you it's about all you really truly remember, to the physical body. When is my body going to get better? When is my mind going to get sharper? And it's not. It's not. And it's not intended to. We're not here to try to perfect the human condition at all. First of all, because it never can be perfected. There is, uh, you almost say, a, um, a hidden button deep inside the, uh, the energy of everybody that will not allow the perfection of the human condition, because then you would never get out. All the pieces of the puzzle aren't there, in other words, so you're never going to complete it. And that's a good thing, because that would really trap you here. You're going through a whole thing right now that seems very strange to the human, and it is loss of control. Now, you're, you all have high levels of control, otherwise you won't be here. Um, I mean, particularly for Chambra. And a lot of you say, well, no, I'm not controlling. <clears throat> I think I have indigestion already. No, you, you've controlled the biological and the mental process very, very well. You've become very adept at it. But now, suddenly, you're going out of control. The human is losing control, or at least the perspective of control. The human feels that Everything is kind of falling apart. They can't, you can't focus here anymore. You can't depend on this old way of handling things. In the last couple of weeks in particular, I've seen so many of you, you can't even read a page in the book because your eyes are wandering, your brain is wandering. You're like, what's wrong with me? Of course, you know what you conclude is that you're either getting old or you're getting Alzheimer's or you're losing it. You are not. You are simply going through a transformation. You're losing control, and that's exactly the way it should be. Your body is reacting in weird ways. I would say uh, on a typical day, I hear about 27 percent of Shamba say, oh, I'm dying. I must be dying. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's very dramatic and, you know, <laughs> oh, I'm dying. I, uh, I'm going to get some disease. Most of them don't. Uh, you, you, because your body is changing so rapidly right now, and yes, it hurts at times. If you ever wore braces when you were younger on your teeth, that's not a pleasant thing, but the end result, you get straight teeth. But here you're going through a tremendous change in the body. It's easier to die, but you didn't. You're going through a tremendous change in the body. It's going to hurt once in a while. A and your mind, poor mind, <laughs> it, it, uh, we're going to talk about it a lot at Pronos, but the mind is not going to work the way it did before. The mind cannot, uh, literally, and just a kind of a little taste of uh, Pronos coming up. The, the mind, the era of the mind, is done on this planet, uh, and I'm not talking about in the future. I'm talking about it already happened. Computers are smarter than you are faster, more efficient. They don't whine as much. They don't need to be fed. <laughs> Computers are faster. They can – when you Google, uh, I think you call it, uh, you do a, one of those search engine things, and you, you type in uh, – what, what do you type in? Uh, Donald Trump. Donald Trump. <laughs> 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 uh, let's say you Google um, uh, St. Germain. <laughs> yeah, 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 much better. You Google St. Germain. In a fraction of a second, the computers go through about a trillion different options. A trillion. You, know, you hit that button, and once in a while that little thing starts spinning, and five seconds have passed and you're cussing. <laughs> it's just gone through over a trillion different potentials based on uh, analyzing all the data that's out there on the planet right now. Your mind can't do that. The era of the mind is this is it. This is the last true era of the mind. 
you're the ones actually leading that charge, believe it or not. Even some of you who say, how about me? I'm not technical at all. You don't have to be. You are leading that change of the mind. Now, it's not all going to change in the next two, three, four generations. It will take a while, but there is a dramatic change taking place on the planet. A little hint on that. Why, why have the mind figure out complex calculations? Why sit down with a piece of paper and figure out complex cal mathematical calculations when you can push a button? Why? But the mind is feeling, oh my God, I'm being replaced by a computer, by a robot. A and, and there's this whole feeling that adds to the element of being lost. And so you, as Shambhar, are going, what's happening in the mind here? What am I going to do? And then you, you, you start taking supplements. Uh, you start taking mind awareness supplements. And I have to stop and say, shut up. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Let yourself experience what you're going through without fighting it, without medicating it, or without meditating it. Allow it. Embrace it. Be with it. You are exactly exactly where you should be right now, physically, mentally, everything else. No, it's not pretty. No, it's not pretty. It hasn't been for any of the other Ascended Masters. None of them had pretty, nicey kind of uh, enlightenments. Yours is actually easier than what they went through. At least you have each other. At least you're together. At least you have me. <laughs> <laughs> And I am simply here, truly, I am simply here because you asked for a mirror. That's it. Uh, and it's not really my wisdom, it's yours. It's not really me up here with the antics and the distraction, it's yours. This is your creation. So you're exactly where you should be. But you're going through this loss of control right now, and it's okay. That's actually a really, really good sign. When you just don't feel like things are working the way they did anymore, of course not. Your body is going through dramatic changes that cannot be measured yet, scientifically yet, but within the next few years, absolutely. Do a DNA test now. Do, do it now. S uh, cough up – how, how much do they cost? Uh, $69. That's insane <laughs> for a whole sequencing. Do a test now, come back and do another one in three years, and you'll see a difference. Yeah, Use a different name, a different <laughs> email address and everything else, but do it again and see what happens. You're exactly where you should be, and you're losing control. Now, that sounds kind of weird. Losing control to what? To what? Well, it's the Master, which you are also. But instead of being in a limited spectrum of um, of senses and a limited spectrum of awareness and of creative expression, as the human was, you're now opening all that up, and it changes everything. And it changes the control. Which, if I could say to any of you, take your foot off the brake and your hands off the wheel. You're not giving over authority to someone else, uh, saints, archangels, uh, ascended masters, or God. It's not like let go and let God. It's let go, I am. And it's very frightening for the human to take the, the hand off the wheel and off the brake. What's going to happen? And the human is so used to controlling every aspect of their life. Let go of that control right now and watch what happens. And you're not – it's not as a negative to the human. In other words, not saying – that anything was bad with the control. It's just the experience that you had. And it's not saying that you're going to relinquish your humanness, uh, because you're not, you, but you're opening to the and, to different potentials and possibilities, to the master that's within. You're opening to the and. So it feels very strange, and I hope every one of you last couple of weeks has been going through all sorts of crap in your life, because then it means you're really allowing this enlightenment. If you've had doubts and mental stuff and back and forth and you just 
not sleeping well and you're eating too much and then you're not eating enough and you wonder what's going on with you and your body hurts and because you're going through embodied enlightenment. Just feel for a moment. that Some of you are going to write amazing books or have fantastic films, videos that nobody's going to believe. Just imagine for a moment the book of your enlightenment. But you have to, you can't, don't be serious when you're thinking about it or actually doing it. Don't make it dreary. As I always tell you, embellish a little bit, you know. Use some theatrics, you know. Stop getting so stuck in the mud. Have a little fun with it. You know, a funny thing happened to me on the way to enlightenment, Kuthumi. I lost everything. Uh, lost my mind, lost everything. And have fun with it. Just feel into a, a moment your book of enlightenment. Not some overly holy, sacred type of text, you know, boring, but the whole transition of going from what you thought was just uh, another human life into a transformation that is literally setting the pace for the next evolution on the planet. Because the next evolution, or the, the evolution on the planet, is not going to look like what it has been in the past, in the past hundred years, thousand years, or million years. Next evolution on this planet is going to be something totally different. And you're leading. Oh, oh. Donald, is that you? Oh, oh. Is that Donald calling? Oh, oh. Or he's twittering. Is that, that's a Twitter. I, I knew Donald was going to Twitter. We'll let it go for this time. Next time it goes in the toilet. Yeah, well, can we bring a camera in there and watch the flushing? <laughs> so let's take a deep breath with that. Um, I will get to the point now, the point of this shout. It's taken me, God, forever to get there, but let's take a deep breath. Now, something very, very important. It's taken me a while to build up to it. This comes to the point now that you're at, in spite of all the struggle you had getting there, where because of what I'm going to call your maturity – I think that's an okay word – because of your maturity, spiritual maturity or awareness of maturity, because of your uh, ability to at least begin discerning, which most humans aren't good at, uh, you weren't very good at it, but your ability now to discern. You are f- so afraid of judging things. So, oh, I can't. I can't uh, feel into another person because then I'm judging. Pfft, I don't know. Sartre, funny guy, nice guy, weird guy. You know, that's discernment. <laughs> and, 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 and a great heart. Uh, and, uh, but that's, that's, that's observing. We talked about this in some of our Schomburg gatherings. That's observing. It's not a judgment. You're so afraid to observe, to be aware of yourself and things around you, because you thought, well, that's judgment. Ah, we're going beyond that. It's observation. You can, you can see somebody at a grocery store, go, oh my God, that person is as ugly as some of those sweaters I saw at the <laughs> Crimson Circle. Oh, I shouldn't be thinking that. No, it's okay. Now, it's okay, because all you're doing is picking up on their thoughts their projections. You're not projecting it. You're picking up on it. It's in the air, and you're beginning to pick up on it. So my point for today is it's in the air. Oh, and is it in the air? I'll explain in a moment. There's a lot in the air, and you're going to start picking up on it because you have the maturity, because you have the discernment, and you're not so worried about judging anymore. You still are kind of a little bit, but you're finally allowing yourself to be discerning. It's in the air. At least you could pick up the wrong audio. Why? No, really, uh, Edith, without the microphone, so nobody online could hear how rude, uh, was saying, I wish we could. Well, you should always ask for the microphone. So Edith says, I wish we could pick up the, the winning lotto numbers. Really? Really? Is that what we're here for? No, I, I know you were half joking, but the other half wishes like hell. <laughs> you, is that what we're here for? 
is that we're going to try to make the human richer. Because I can tell you right now what's going to happen to a human who is in that state of consciousness. They win $3 million in the lottery. Three years later, they're going to be wishing they had never won it, because they are in an energy pattern. And uh, they're just getting more energy to support their bad habits, if they, if they have them. And most people that play the lottery do. They're desperate. They're wanting some magic, some trick. And actually, it's the worst thing that can happen to them. It's just more of the same energy. And they're going to go, they're going to go deeper into uh, lack of abundance. Oddly enough, you win $3 million, what do they do? They blow it. They go on drugs. They give it away to everybody. Their family now hates them. Their friends hate them. Uh, it, it's an awful thing, because it's simply putting more energy to a bad situation. You don't have to worry about that, because you're not putting more energy into the, the, the human whole, as, as I call it, into the human condition. And therefore, all of a sudden you realize, I don't need to win the lottery, don't want to win the lottery. It's actually a collection of mass consciousness energy that really doesn't support your journey. So what do you do, Edith? Instead of winning the lottery, what do you do? Well, Borrow money from Joanne. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm just being <laughs> not judgmental. What do you do? You're just joking, but but you weren't joking. That's the thing. You were just joking, but you weren't joking. So it's in the air. Why why can't we just pick lottery numbers? You better be ready with that microphone, Linda. Did you want? No. What? Here's what you do now. We're, we're kind of starting a little new phase here. It's called It's in the Air, and it's everything. And I'll explain in just a moment. You take a deep breath. You give up the human control. Because, Edith, you control a lot of your life, and you actually try to control others. I'm sorry to say, but I'm not sorry to say. You, no, you really, you're, you're, you've got a tremendous amount of control. You've got a big heart, but there's a lot of control in your life, and you're afraid to let go. So what do you do? You let go of the control, you take a deep breath, and you allow energy to come to you, to serve you. You don't win lotteries. You just stand there, maybe bored, nothing to do all the time in the world. <laughs> you stand there, and you allow it. You don't think. You don't, there's not a mantra. You don't say, oh, I allow the abundance. <laughs> you just stand there, dumb and happy and without control, <laughs> And you just, if you need to do anything, just raise your hands and let it come to you. You are a magnet, an attractant of energy, whether it comes as money, as, as love, as uh, well, easy, punishment, suffering. But you are an attractant of energy. Let it come to you. It's that simple. If you go out and try to uh, desperately work hard to make money, and if uh, trying to win lotteries, trying to scheme the system, it's not going to work. We're going to a place, actually, of being very energy independent, where you're not a parasite relying on everything else in the world to support you. Where It's what I call sovereignty. Sovereignty. And I'll tell you right now, it's in the air. Master, grant me the serenity to allow the things I am choosing the courage to release the things that are not mine, and the wisdom to know the frickin' difference. Yeah. And it's – if you would write that on the board, please. I think it was – Oh, yeah. yeah, like I remember. So and I, I, I'm <laughs> taking that from a 12-step program, but isn't this a 12-step program? The because, uh, Master, grant me the serenity – let's put that up on the board. Nice handwriting. Pastor, Pastor. Master, grant me the serenity to allow the things I am choosing. This goes back to my premise. What is yours and what is not? What is yours, to buy a set of perfectly, is only the things you are choosing. The serenity to allow. The serenity, uh, uh, grant me the serenity to allow those, th that which I choose the courage to release what's not mine, your ancestral family, your biology. It's not yours. It's not yours. It belongs to the ancestors, which you are one of, but it's still not yours. The courage – oh, she's concentrating 
that body is not yours, but yet, yet you hold on to it. You control it. And now the control is starting to go away and you're freaking out. The body is not yours. The what I would call the sovereign body, the energy body that's coming in, is all yours. And it's not addicted to energy, to other people, or anything else like this body is. The courage to release what is not mine, and the wisdom to know the frickin' difference. And yes, we're going to put frickin' in there, just to shake them up a little bit. The thoughts in your mind, I've told you, are not yours. They're not yours. Uh, probably anywhere between 84 92 percent of the thoughts are not yours. They're coming from mass consciousness. They're coming from hypnosis. They're coming from teachers, parents, people sitting next to you, everybody else but your own. What are your thoughts? The ones you choose. That's it. It's that simple. It's that simple. The rest of them are not. And it takes courage, because suddenly you're going to start losing control. You let go of your family. You let go of thoughts that aren't yours. You let go of habits and ways that really aren't yours. You were hypnotized into them or, I don't know, walked into them accidentally or whatever, but they're not yours. Go back to what we talked about last month. What is in your heart? Goodness. Compassion. Compassion. That is yours. What else is yours? Wisdom? It's coming in. But the body? No. Your biological family? No. And I know it's hard for some of you to say, oh, he's breaking up families. No, I'm not. I'm saying be realistic about your biological family. They might be great people and you love them, but they are not yours. That is one of the strongest links on the planet right now. Your children, it's like, oh, they're, they're mine. I've got to take care of them. Bullshit. They're not yours. They never were. Once you get over that, once you love them as the soul being that they are, great. But yours, no. Your responsibility, absolutely not. Kick them out. Not your responsibility. They're not yours. And see, this is where we get this conflict. Ooh, I want a little bit of freedom, but n not this whole thing, because i got to take care of my kids. I, and it's, no, you don't. Let it go and watch what happens. Release other people in your life energetically, emotionally. I'm not saying kick them. I'm not saying to walk away from everybody, but stop the parasitic actions of them and of you. It takes a lot of courage, and what happens for the most part is you say, "I'll take, I'll take uh, 25 cents worth of freedom." <laughs> then it's not freedom until you take the full dollars worth, the whole thing can't do a little bit of freedom because it's still not freedom. You can't stick your hand out the cage of the zoo and say that your hand is free because it's not. You just start sticking your hand out of the cage and somebody's going to come along and bite it off. Uh, so it takes a lot of courage to release what is not yours. Now, you're going to say, well, I'm not sure what's really not mine, and you're going to get into this whole mental masturbation thing. Be clear, be discerning, have that maturity. That is not mine. And then allow what comes next. Because as you free things in your life, free yourself from your body. That's not yours. You free things in your life. All of this whole process of embodied enlightenment happens much more naturally, much smoother. But back to my point. There is a lot in the air right now. In the air, I, I, I don't necessarily mean literally, although that's some of it, but there are thoughts, consciousness, awareness, ideas, creativity that's floating around in the air that's in uh, your sense of awareness, your perception of awareness, that comes from a million years ago, because it's all really happening right now. Science is going to find, as, as uh, science um, uh, really hones in on things, uh, probably not in your lifetime, but they're going to realize that uh, in hypothetical quantum physics at some point, somebody's going to write a paper and say, this is just a big theory, but everything that I've found, this physicist is going to say, is as weird as it sounds, everything is existing and happening at the same moment. 
And they're going to say, so therefore, the future is already here. The past is here. And humans who think so time-oriented go, oh, that's confusing. That's really a mess. But actually, there is no separation of time. So it's here. Basically, that means it's in the air. It means your enlightenment in this lifetime is in the air. And with the maturity and discernment, you can start feeling into it. If you're not discerning, you don't know what the hell you want, you have no maturity, clarity, or anything else, it's just going to be one great big mess. You're going to be picking up on everything and getting really confused. But as you have become more mature and more discerning, you can start picking up on what's in the air. There's you in the air. Let's start with that. The Master is right here. And Master doesn't come in in a physical being at all. It is in consciousness. Uh, I say in the air. It's already here. It's already here. And the Master is sitting in her chair, his chair, just saying, OK, when is the human going to let go of human control to allow true divine flow? Because human control, there is not really flow. There is addiction to energies. There is uh, a lot of fear and a lot of doubt. The Master is saying, I'm just going to sit here quietly until the human lets go of that control and allows, allows the true self, me and the human, the and. Take a moment to feel that right now. It's in the air. It's not off in another galaxy. It's not off in spiritual wonderland. It's here right now. It's in the air. In the air also are, is all the wisdom of all of your lifetimes. And this may sound a little confusing, but you have lifetimes that are in the future that have already happened, so they're kind of in the past. <laughs> Kind of. Uh, but the human thinks so chronologically in time order, but it's not. So you have tremendous wisdom. It's in the air right now. You haven't tapped into it before because you didn't have, you weren't allowing yourself the maturity or the discernment. Matter of fact, you had shut down. You were afraid uh, almost to open up. You withdrew into your tiny world. And now it's in the air. You can open up. Remember where we started talking about that psychic energy of the feminine? It's actually in the masculine and feminine also, but you start bringing that in now. The, the feminine knows how to go out and expand beyond time. You just start allowing that in now. Now, in the condition that you're in, kind of in a state of overwhelm, being lost and feeling out of control, it's going to be really weird. I'm not saying this is going to be easy. It's going to feel really weird starting now to open up to it's in the air. It's you in the air. It's your wisdom that's in the air. It's a lot of other things. The way consciousness works, the way that human consciousness works, is very, very interesting. For instance, if you ever look back um, into history and you say, at the time of the Invention of the light bulb, for instance. What was Americans believe? It was Thomas Edison who invented the light bulb, right? We all know that. No. There were about 27 different inventors in different parts of the world who were working on the same thing at the same time. It's in the air. 27. Now, there's only about six or seven that are actually known, but I know there were 27. The other ones just were obscure. They were never known. So it wasn't just the brilliance of Thomas Edison, but Thomas Edison did have the ability to feel what's in the air. He wasn't chosen by God or spirit or the light beings, ha, pun intended, uh, to, to, <laughs> to be the inventor at all. It was in the air. There's a very wonderful thing about the human consciousness and condition. It kind of all goes up into kind of a mass consciousness which generally is kind of putrid, but there are some pockets of it which are brilliant. It's in the air, meaning that you can start picking up on things that are in consciousness, just floating around out there. 
Maybe nobody else will pick up on them. Maybe what's in the air, what is kind of, I would say, the evolution of consciousness is the, the true light body, uh, the true energy body, I prefer to call it, or the sovereign body. It's in the air. You don't have to work at it. You don't. Your human mind does not have to and should not try to figure it out. It's in, figure it out. It's in the air. It's all around. It's just about allowing it. Most people never will because they think it's crazy as hell. What are you talking about? But it's in the air. You know that. You can feel it. Your knowingness. It's in the air. A huge change in the way the human mind works, which I will talk about in Pronos. Notice how I'm slipping in all these subliminal hints and messages. <laughs> it, what comes next is the big question. Are we going to have computer minds? Not at all. Not at all. Who needs it when you have computers? So the mind evolves to something else. It takes a new place. It, it, it will not be the uh, the center of addiction that it is now. The mind's going to take a new place, and it's in the air right now. And you can pick up on it. And yes, it is. It is yours, and it is consciousness. It is your. It is yours because you are contributing to that consciousness, as others like you are. But it's in the air, and you could start picking up on it now. The other dimensions that I talk about, the other dimensions which are the senses that you've forgot uh, for so long now, forgotten about, they're in the air. The sense of beauty, the sense of compassion, the sense of love, uh, they're in the air. And I'm not talking about just the feel-good stuff. I'm talking about the dimension. Because a sense, the other 200,000 senses that you're not using, they're in the air. They're available. You don't have to break your mind. You don't have to work your mind to figure it out. What I'm saying is, take a deep breath and let go of control. It's in the air. You, the human, are not responsible for the enlightenment of yourself. It's in the air. You're just being asked to allow it, to relax into it. Let's put on some music, and without any more talk, let's just go there, in the air. Take a good deep breath. We come to this time of the mirab, where the talk doesn't serve us anymore. We go beyond words, so we put on the music and allow a shift of consciousness. Take a good deep breath. It took us a while to get to the point today. The planet is changing very, very quickly. The planet is changing very quickly right now. And you chose to be here at this time for good reason. You wanted to be part of it. You wanted to experience what it was like to go through the on-the-fly transformation. You chose. Nobody else. It's the most beautiful time. Yeah, I know sometimes it's difficult, but it's going to make a great big story. <laughs> and now we talk about this, it's in the air. It always was, but. I want to really talk about it with you now. I'd like you to start experiencing it. To be able to allow it, you have the maturity to, to understand much more now about what is yours and what is not. You've released a lot of what is not yours. You now know what is. So with that kind of balance, But start now picking up what's in the air. It would be too overwhelming for most people. 
You know, the ones who call themselves psychic or sensitive, they burn out quickly because for the most part, they, they really aren't prepared to understand what is theirs and what is not. And they pick up on all sorts of things. Many of them take it all as their own, the good, the bad, the ugly. Now, with discernment and maturity, you could take a good deep breath and feel it's in the air. The master, the wisdom of the past and future lives that you've had, it's in the air. Human consciousness, there's so much floating around, great ideas that are not implemented because people have doubts and fears. Truly great ways for healing. There's some amazing, uh, what I would call, psychotherapies that are in the air, but nobody has had the courage to practice them. You felt these things in the air, but you held back. You felt so many things about yourself. And you know what? You could feel them getting closer and closer. You felt so many things about the Master, about what comes next. You felt them and then you doubted them. You allowed yourself just to taste and then you closed it off. Now we come to this point in embodied enlightenment where it's like, no, it's time to sense what's in the air. Letting the Master come closer and closer. human consciousness has inspired, you could say, so many great ideas, innovative concepts that are not being acted out in this plane, this reality, but they're in the air. Let's say they're, they're just a half a breath away, half a dimension away. They're floating out there, just like, well, the invention of the aeroplane. A lot of people think it was the Wright brothers. It was actually a French man, of course. <laughs> but it was the Wright brothers who became noted for it. It was in the air, and there was about 12 others who were all working on airplanes at the time. Now, this wasn't in the age of the internet where everything was out there. It was back a long time ago, where they had no way of connecting or corresponding because it was in the air. What's in the air now is all of the energy and all of the beauty, I, I should say, of this change that's occurring on the planet. If you allow yourself to feel into it for a moment, it really erases a lot of the fear of what's going to happen tomorrow. It's, it's in the air what comes of this evolution. Not saying it's going to be easy, but what comes is quite beautiful. It's in the air. The ability to feel the angelic beings who are around, or the, the non-physical beings who are around, and they're they're not there to solve your life problems, but. They're great to connect with because then you start realizing there is a lot more out there. They're not going to tell you the answers to the human's energy crisis or your personal psychological problems. But once you start realizing that there is so much here, I, I say it's out there, but it's actually here, suddenly you break free of a very limited reality base. You realize. It's in the air, non-physical beings, angelic beings. 
beings who have never been to this earth before, but are very curious about how it goes. It's all in the air. We come to this point on the path where you learn to allow what is yours. You know, take responsibility for it. Bring it into that heart of compassion that you have. And you've learned with a lot of courage to let go of what's not yours. The world's problems are not yours. They're really not. Your ancestral biology and your ancestral psychology, they're not yours. They were part of evolution. They, they got you here, I guess, but they're not yours. So many of the thoughts that run through your mind that you try to grapple with, really not yours. Suddenly now, with that release, with that clarity, we're ready now to go into what's in the air. What else is out there? Another way of all saying all this is this whole experience into embodied enlightenment doesn't really take any effort. It takes a lot of allowing. You can't figure it out, nor should you. It's in the air. Through the Master, through the I Am, it's in the air. I know right now is a strangely uncomfortable time because you're losing the human control. Well, what's in the air is the divine that needs no control whatsoever because it is not addicted to energy. Please take a deep breath and with the beautiful music playing, let yourself open up now. I'll tell you this, you're not going to get overwhelmed. You won't. By expanding, expanding your consciousness, you're not going to get overwhelmed. You, you've learned too much now about what is yours and what's not. What's in the air, yes, you're going to feel the aches and pains of other humans. You're going to sense them, but they're not yours, so you can let them go. When you begin to sense that Master and the wisdom, in the air. You'll feel the past and future lives. I haven't really talked a lot about that in our gatherings. I don't want to focus too much on that, but you're at the point now to understand that they don't bring their history. Past and future lives don't bring their history. They bring their wisdom. Mm. Before, if we'd have gotten into past lives, you'd have gotten all caught up in the details and their dramas and their successes and failures. Right now, what's in the air is not their history, but their wisdom. You come to this point now of being able to truly expand, open up. Between now and our next gathering, I feel that you're going to be really feeling the things in the air. I mean, what's there? What's, what's directly, you could say, yours? What's not? Right now, they're right here in our gathering, whether you're online or in the studio, there's what you could say creative pulses that are in the air, really available to anyone. There are stories of the future where this planet goes to. It's in the air. It's not a destiny. It's simply stories that are in the air. We now open more to human consciousness and beyond, into 
what I guess you would call divine consciousness, but it's just consciousness. Now we can open up to that. And when you do, with your maturity, with your discernment, you can also open up to the you, the I am. It's also in the air. How will you know the difference between what's your divine, what's you? What are mass consciousness thoughts? What are just these creative bursts in the air? So you take a deep breath and you choose what's yours, what's not. Some of what you're going to start feeling is, I would say, a little bit more mundane. Oh, Christmas is in the air, or tension is in the air. But as you become more discerning and more allowing, you're really going to feel a lot of different things. Uh, hope, indeed, yours and mass consciousnesses. As you open up to feel and discern, and to allow what's in the air, it's going to continue to change your dreams. Because your dreams, your nocturnal dreams, are really picking up on what's in the air. Don't try to dissect your dreams. Please do not right now. We're going to be getting more into dream reality, but it's not a series of um, funny symbols. <laughs> Let's take a deep breath together and allow. It's time we open up to what's in the air. It's you, and it's so much more. There's an abundance. Let's take a good deep breath. And it's time for me now to get off to the Ascended Masters Club, where a fine meal and Jesus await. <laughs> it's time for you to enjoy your holiday season. Let's take a good deep breath. And I know lately uh, this tremendous feeling of, I guess, loss, uh, being lost and loss of control, but that's all part of it. Take a good deep breath and honor yourself for being where you are today. And with that, remember, all is well in all of creation. Thank you. And happy holidays. And so it is. I invite each of us to just, again, take a good deep breath and let this experience integrate for you. Each of us, with that individual experience, take a good deep breath and let it be with you. Not just now, but I'll let it continue. So with that, thank you for being here with the Crimson Circle for this month. And we look forward to seeing you again soon for the next shout here at the Crimson Circle Connection Center. Thank you and happy, happy holidays to all celebrating, being, and allowing. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.
Walking in the winter wonderland 